Well, we've been talking about what it looks like to love Christ and love people, practically speaking. And we've been talking about in our own lives how we can be this type of person that Jesus invites us to be and the way that Jesus calls us to be and the way Jesus looks towards us. And so I was thinking we needed to find um, an example of what it looks like. So I was looking for people that have a heart to help other people. I was looking for people, and of course you think of people like um, Mother Teresa or Gandhi being like a servant. I know I'm just talking about serving in general. And I found that the best example I could think of was an actor who's starred in some great movies like Caddyshack and Ghostbusters. What about Bob? Groundhog Day? Bill Murray, obviously, is who I'm talking about. And of course he would be the example in a sermon for how to treat other people, right? Here's the thing. It's true. I saw a show, documentary about him, and... There are tons of stories of people that have interacted with Bill Murray and left with an experience that's just amazing. One time he was in a city and saw this street lined with cars and he thought, well, there must be a party or something going on. So he went to find out what was going on. Sure enough, he comes up to a house where there is a party and he just goes inside these people's house. And then he goes and he finds out the people who are throwing the party are doing the dishes in the kitchen. And Bill Murray says, you go hang out with your guests. I'll do the dishes. And he does all the dishes. And then when he's finished, he just leaves. I mean, that's crazy, right? Another time he's at a bar and sees that it's busy, they're overwhelmed, and they need help. So he gets behind the bar and starts serving drinks. And everybody got served. They didn't get what they ordered, but everybody got something. <laughs> and then another time, there was a band loading up equipment. He started loading up with them, and they realize it's him. And they're like, Bill Murray, what are you doing here? And he's like, I'm going to be your roadie today and help you set up. And then finally, one of the best stories was there was a cab driver. Bill Murray gets in the cab. And he says, what do you like to do besides drive a cab? And he said, play the saxophone. And so Bill asked him, are you any good? And he goes, of course not. I drive a cab 14 hours a day. When can I play the saxophone? He said, well, where is it? It's in the trunk. So the guy pulls over. He gets his saxophone out. And Bill Murray gets in the front and drives the cab driver around the rest of the day so he can practice his saxophone. And it's like story after story, you see someone who doesn't need to do this, has nothing to gain at this point in their career, and yet he's constantly looking for opportunities to where he can step in and help other people and to enjoy the moments in our lives that we have. I don't know what Bill Murray's faith life is like. I'm sure that would be an interesting discussion, but... What we learn here is this attitude of looking to what others' needs are. Because the reality is we can often be so caught up in being busy and having the things to do that we need to do and being so laser-focused on our lives that we can't notice what's going on in anyone else's. We talked in the beginning of this series about what it would look like if Everyone in our congregation had this attitude of others first, of caring about other people, of taking a moment to see where we have an opportunity to show the love of Jesus in someone's life. And I want to talk about a couple of examples in Scripture where we see Jesus encounter people that I've mentioned briefly before, but a little more in depth. In Mark chapter 5, Jesus is in this area across the Sea of Galilee where it's a little bit remote. It's kind of out of the way. The Gerasenes. And we're told that in this area there is 
this idea that all of the area is unclean. And we see that there is a man who's possessed by a demon. We hear in the Gospels that it's the one who rips his clothes off and runs around, that they have to use chains to tie him down. And here Jesus is taking his disciples into this unclean place with this unclean man and in a place where no one else would ever want to go. And so, when Jesus shows up, the man possessed by the demons says, What do you want with me, son of the Most High God? He recognizes immediately who Jesus is. And he says, What do you want with me? Jesus says to him, What is your name? The demons say, Legion, for we are many. And then Jesus casts the demons out into a herd of pigs, and they run off of a cliff. And what we see here is after this happens, the man's completely changed. He is healed. He is different. This man has been transformed, and so he comes to Jesus and says, let me go with you. Jesus says, no, you need to stay here. Now why? Because Jesus knew that this man, being known in this area that was kind of out a ways and where people didn't want to go, he knew this man's testimony would be enough that people would be drawn to Christ because of it. He understood that this guy was a billboard for Jesus. That through this healing, he could point to who Christ is. And then, after that, they leave. And you see, the disciples are confused because they go all this way. They do one thing, and then they leave. And yet Jesus understood that was the work they had to do there. That was the most important thing. Jesus saw what no one else saw. He saw an opportunity here for someone to be an advertisement for him. And the truth is, everybody in that culture, everybody in that area avoided the demon-possessed man, as any of us would, I'm sure. But there are people in our lives who we avoid as well, right? There are people in our lives that we stay away from because we know it's going to be difficult, or we know they're just going to rub us the wrong way, or we're really annoyed with that person, or whatever it is. And we sometimes feel like this can be hopeless, that there's no way we could ever interact with those people in our lives that we keep at a distance. And yet, over and over and over, we see Jesus looking for opportunities to interact in ways that will affect huge numbers of people. One of the synagogue leaders named Jairus came, and when he saw Jesus, falls at his feet. Now, we're told in Scripture this guy is a synagogue leader. His daughter is sick, and as a leader of the synagogue, he would have been in charge of worship and the readings in the school or the temple, everything in their daily lives. And so he would have had a close relationship with the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, the people that were the religious leaders. And so in that, this guy, the synagogue leader would not have normally come to Jesus because the Pharisees wouldn't have liked that. People would have been confused by it. But his daughter is sick and dying, and he comes because he sees that Jesus has this message of hope. And so he comes, falls to his knees, and asks Jesus to come help his daughter. And it says, so Jesus went with him. Jesus didn't worry about what, are you sure? What are your friends going to think? Or anything like that. Instead, he goes alongside. And then, he doesn't just say, hey, you need to do this or do that, or do you know this or that. What he says is, he makes himself available and Jesus goes. And then, while they're on their way, Jesus walking with them, we see that there's another person in the story. Because now, as Jesus is going, people are starting to crowd in and want to see Jesus. 
And we're told that people are crowding all around Jesus. And this woman who's been bleeding for 12 years comes and just touches Jesus' cloak. And she's healed. Jesus says, who was that that touched me? And the disciples are like, why are you asking us? There's people everywhere. But then this woman comes up and acknowledges what she's done. And if you remember, Jesus says, go, your faith has made you well. She was seeking to be in contact with Jesus because she knew he could bring healing. Jesus was on his way to bring healing to the synagogue leader's daughter here, and this encounter happens. And as I look at these stories in Mark, and I think about our lives, you think about those people in your lives that you interact with, and do we take the time always to listen to what they need? Do we point them to the fact that Jesus is with us the same way he was with them? So Jesus is fully present with all of these people. And Jesus says in the last chapter of Matthew, go and make disciples because I will be with you until the end of the age. We're reminded over and over that God gives us opportunities to share who Jesus is by how we treat others, by how we live. But it's never because of us that the credit goes to us. The credit always goes to Jesus Christ and the healing that he brings. Whether it's physical, emotional, spiritual, it always goes to Jesus. Paul said in Romans chapter 8, And the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living among you. He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of the Holy Spirit in you. That same power that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And that's important because Jesus says he's with us. He said one who is greater is coming. That's the Holy Spirit. And he says that through the gift of our baptism, we have the Holy Spirit in us. And our response then is to live that way. Live like we've got the best news ever. Like we have this amazing message of hope and healing and grace and love because of who Jesus is. That is the point of all of this. It's not a you should do these things to get in good graces. It's wow, what a privilege it is to tell others about this joy that I have. So when the world sees people as weak like the demon-possessed man, or like this woman that had this ailment, or like this official's young daughter. Jesus sees them for who they are. He doesn't let these temporary things get in the way. Think about that. The world describes them as demon-possessed, as sick and on their deathbed. But Jesus says that's temporary. They have eternal life by faith. So the things we often focus on take us off track and keep us with our eyes fixed everywhere but on Jesus Christ. Jesus is showing us through action to look through those surface level things and to see that this is not the end. That our story is not yet fully written. That we have so much more to look forward to. One day we will be free from suffering and pain and sin and death and struggles. And in the meantime, Jesus says, bring as much of that attitude of heaven and eternal life to this earth when you can. As Christians, that's what we get to do when the Holy Spirit works through us. So then Jesus, after this woman is healed, comes to the house of Jairus, who daughter. Now we see when Jesus was speaking, people came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue leader, and said, your daughter is dead. Why bother the teacher anymore? Jesus overheard this and he says, do not be afraid, just believe. That same message Jesus gives us, no matter what we face in life, Jesus says, Look to me because I will always be there and always bring you through. 
So then, everybody's crying and mourning and wailing, and Jesus says, the child isn't dead, the child's merely asleep. They look at him like he's crazy, like this guy is just this eternal optimist, like you don't understand, she is dead. Jesus put all the people out, takes the father and mother and disciples with him, and went into where the child is. He took her by the hand and said, little girl, I say to you, get up. And immediately she began to walk around. What an amazing thing it is when Jesus enters into our life and brings this hope and this healing. What we can take away from this is we have everything we need to face the struggles of this world. We have this amazing gift of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit working through us to point others to him. So I would encourage you to be reminded of these things when you face trials and struggles. When there's people in your life that are hard to deal with, take a moment and just see how you can make a difference by sharing Jesus through your actions. And most of all, may we find comfort and peace in knowing that Jesus is always walking alongside of us and that the Holy Spirit is continuing to renew us each and every day in our faith through him. In Jesus' name, amen.